Now we can do a quantitative comparison question that 72% of the people who took the official GRE test got wrong. You're given information in two columns. You compare column A, which has x minus 1 times x times x plus 1, or column B, x times x times x. And you pick A if quantity in column A is bigger, B if the quantity in column B is bigger, C if the two quantities are equal, and D if the relationship cannot be determined from the information given. This looks like a straightforward algebra question, and we can simplify it by making it x times x minus 1 times x plus 1 compared to x to the third in column B. If we recognize that x minus 1 times x plus 1 actually is the difference between two perfect squares, we can simplify column A into x times x squared minus 1. When we multiply x times the quantity in the parentheses, we get x to the third minus x in the parentheses. When they compared x to the third minus x in column A, with x to the third in column B, a lot of the GRE students said the answer's gotta be, the answer's gotta be B. The quantity in column B is greater. But it's been a long time since a lot of GRE students have done any algebra, so they don't want to take any chances with algebra. They want to use solid numbers that they can understand. We can check our work by substituting 3 for x. So we get 3 minus 1 times 3 times 3 plus 1. And column B has 3 times 3 times 3. This turns column A into 2 times 3 times 4. And column B into 3 to the third. Now we're feeling better about our algebra because with numbers, column A turns into 24 and column B turns into 27. So a lot more GRE students said the answer's got to be, the answer's got to be B. The quantity in column B is greater. But we can check even more carefully because nowhere did they tell us that X is an integer so it could be a decimal. We can check this possibility by using 0.5 instead of x. That makes column A 0.5 minus 1 times 0.5 times 0.5 plus 1 and column B 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. This turns column A into negative 0.5 times 0.5 times 1.5. This turns column A into negative 0.375 and column B into 0.125. Now we're feeling better about our algebra and our numbers because our decimals prove the answer's gotta be, the answer's gotta be B. The quantity in column B is greater. But some people realized right away that they never said that x was a positive number, so they were really quick to realize that they could put in a negative number. We can check this possibility by substituting negative 3 for x. So column A becomes negative 3, negative 1, times negative 3, times negative 3 plus 1. And column B turns into negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. This makes column A negative 4 times negative 3 times negative 2. This turns column A into negative 24 and column B into negative 27. These clever students said the answer's got to be the answer's got to be A. The quantity in column A is greater because negative 24 is greater than negative 27. But there's one more possibility for X. Don't worry if you don't see it right away. The ancient Greeks never found it. The classical Romans never found it. 
and the possibility didn't enter Western mathematics until about 1000 AD. X could be 0 in algebra, so column A could be 0 minus 1 times 0 times 0 plus 1, and column B would be 0 times 0 times 0. This turns column A into negative 1 times 0 times plus 1. Since 0 times anything equals 0, column A is 0 and column B is 0. So the students who saw the simple idea of substituting 0 for x found the answer's got to be the answer's got to be C. The two quantities are equal since 0 equals 0. One way or another, what 72% of the people on the GRE forgot about was what we remember as coins. Are the numbers consecutive? Are they odd or even? Are they integers or fractions? Are they negative or positive? And don't forget about zero. But rather than running through all of these possibilities on the GRE and hoping that we find the exception, if we do an algebra problem and we quickly say the answer's got to be, we realize there must be some sort of exception out there that we don't have time to find, so we make sure when we say got to be, that we spell gotta be with a D. The relationship cannot be determined with the information given. Testing for the public. Nonprofit since 1985. No one makes things easier.